Do not let them scare you into silence and do not let them confuse you into a holding pattern. If you don't know what to do, move, do something because they're coming for you anyway. Story of the day trending everywhere, obviously, Roseanne. This brings us to a big question about free speech versus cultural censorship. My question of the day is, do you think Roseanne's actions, first off, were a fireable offense? Do you think they were too off color? Do you think maybe she deserved a slap on the wrist? It's really simple. What do you think was warranted here? Um, for those who don't know, ABC canceled Roseanne after this Twitter rant from Roseanne, where she compared Valerie Jarrett to a cross between the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes. It does sound bad. It's not unfounded, but in poor taste. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's, yeah. It's, not, it's not completely without merit at all. Um, but then she went on to walk it back, which is the worst thing you do, walking it back with some bogus excuse saying that it was the Ambien <laughs> tweeting. She was tweeting on Ambien, which, that being said, I can sympathize with because when I'm on Ludesta, I start blaming the Jews. Mm -hmm. And you go around sashaying around in your tight clothes and stuff. I won't stand for that anymore. I don't, I don't. I don't walk I, around. I don't, I don't walk. To be I don't walk around in tight clothes. I stay at home for most of the time. You look like a public, and it's a embarrassment to me. You look like a fucking bitch on heat. And if you get raped by a pack of niggers, not my proudest moment. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the Lunesta. It's the Lunesta. A couple of Bud Light limes. All of a sudden, I'm not into it, but I kind of get slavery. <laughs> But uh, so here's here's the point here. I do think. Listen, I think she was. I think it was just a very thoughtless tweet. I don't think it. it obviously, it doesn't matter if you think something's funny. I didn't think it's funny, but you never want to use that argument. Well, I just didn't think it was funny because that's what they use against everything yep. they hate. Right. And sure enough, though, this has been. And this is the, the conversation I think we need to have at large here. MSNBC right away hosted an everyday racism town hall. Here are the highlights. Big news, as you've probably already heard, ABC canceling one of its biggest shows after its star's racist tweet. And the more blatant kind, like the oh, kind like of hate, racist, frankly, that Roseanne Barr put on display it's today. Back. Well, first of all, I think we have to turn it into a teaching moment. Okay. I'm Come fine. Well, I'm worried said, that about is all the, the white people out there who don't I've have a circle of friends and followers who come right to their defense. The clouds that have Remember been put they, over they this Al country Sharpton. to try and bring us back to where this is normal, to take a well-educated, beautiful woman like Valerie Jarrett and equate them with uh, monkeys is not acceptable and we cannot tolerate it. <laughs> Do you realize notice yes. that Al Sharpton just says very obvious things yes. and acts as though he's, he's rallying the troops like, you comparing somebody to a monkey is not very nice. <laughs> Some would say that to do so at a dinner conversation would be impolite. Also, you should not take things that you have not purchased. <laughs> Some people will call that stupid stealing. This is what the left does. Regardless of how you feel about Roseanne, they take a tiny minority or one small example of a, either a tiny minority of people or a person like Roseanne. They use it to apply the societal problem as a whole, right? Trump's comments prove that misogyny was alive and well. Harvey Weinstein proves that there's rape culture. Some tiny neo-Nazi group in Virginia buys torch tiki torches at Walgreens, and that's proof that Trump's America is full of Nazis. They give huge media time to nobodies like Richard Spencer. People, you have Trayvon Martin getting shot by police. It proves that there's systemic racism. They take these small examples. Rosie O'Donnell, not Rosie O'Donnell, sorry, Roseanne Barr. Oh, I'm going to get letters from <laughs> yeah. you. Roseanne Barr, who ran against Jill Stein, who was a crazy leftist conspiracy theorist who then decided to support Trump, whose son might say in a cash grab, who knows, but it seems like there was an about face done overnight. All of a sudden tweeted something out that compared Valerie Jarrett to a monkey, and that means that racism is a huge problem. We need to have a town hall, trot out Al Sharpton. Is Jackson available? I guess he's not. As opposed to what we do on this show, this is very important. I think most of the right does this. No, I shouldn't say, but we really try to, yeah. which is to let the left speak for themselves. Yep. Taking the DNC, the Bernie Sanders, the Hillary Clintons, the hosts of MSNBC, the Voxes, the John Olivers, at, and then taking on their biggest policies and ideas as opposed to strawmanning it with some small person. This is also proof positive that free speech still exists in the United States. Yes. Here, you get fired. Right? There's a culture of censorship, right. which we'll get into tomorrow specifically after a Vice uh, article. Vice, Vice video came out regarding college bookings with comedians. But in contrast to the UK, where Roseanne could be jailed, just like Tommy Robinson or Meachin. Tommy Robinson was supposed to be on the show this week. I think we might have to have his manager because he is in jail. Or in Canada, where comedians like uh, uh, Mike Ward, Guy Earl. Mike Ward's been on the show. A man was charged with racism, by the way, for singing kung fu fighting at a karaoke bar, I believe in the UK. <laughs> 
So this is something that I've said a lot, but freedom of speech does not exist outside of the United States, period. It doesn't matter how many newsroom speeches Jeff Daniels gives. And if the left had their way here in the United States, we would be like these other countries. If you listen, again, not to fringe candidates, but people who are the heads of the DNC, people who are the heads of these media enterprises, people who have been given the mantle to carry for the left, if they had their way, we would be like these countries where you can be jailed for speech. Now, since they can't do that without rewriting the Constitution, what the media does, it's the circus. It's the torch and it's the pitchfork mob. It's right. the court of public opinion. With Roseanne Barr, one executive at ABC, the judge, jury, and executioner, it's the cultural censorship from the public boycotts to the Soros-funded women's marches to people getting fired for saying non-offensive things, which sometimes happen. And in this case, you may think, okay, this is a fireable offense, but there have undoubtedly been examples where there were non-fireable offenses and people were fired. To YouTube, by the way, great example, YouTube right here, curating your own subscription or notification feed. So please hit the notification bell, but at this point, the only thing you can do is join Mug Club or bookmark the page and check it every day because YouTube keeps changing the rules because we're doing well, we're doing well, Peterson's doing well, Ben Shapiro is doing well. MSNBC sucks, the Young Turks suck, no one wants to watch them, and YouTube is trying to create that culture. It's cultural censorship. The left creates a circus and this culture of intimidation. And people see it as censorship in and of itself because as far as the results, what do you end up with? You end up with a monolith in, position, in all positions of power. This is what's so crazy. This is what, when people talk about, it doesn't matter who's president, right? When you look at the actual institutions of power, it's so funny, the left tries to talk about institutionalized discrimination. Well, let's talk about one of the greatest institutions in the United States as far as influence. Colleges, universities, you have a 12 to one Democrat to Republican ratio. That's actual registered Democrats, let alone the crazy leftist feminists. <laughs> You end up with every single late night host leaning left and or actively endorsing Hillary Clinton. Look, every single one. The one there who didn't, Jimmy Fallon, got flack because he didn't actively insult Trump when he was on the show. <laughs> you end up with networks not only canceling shows because of, granted, bad tweets, like Roseanne, that's my opinion, but successful ones, like Last Man Standing, because of its viewpoint. That one was undeniable. There was nothing offensive. There was no offensive tweet. They canceled it anyway. This is an excuse they're looking for. And the most egregious example, you end up with the world's largest video platform, YouTube, flagrantly disregarding actual recording law, like in our case with South by Southwest or the, uh, the, the Vermont transgender, the transgender undercover, they were advocating hormone blockers. Yeah. A single party consent state, okay? That's the law. Single party consent means I do not need your permission to film you, especially at a public event, like a town hall or like a public film festival. But YouTube disregards the actual law because they want to appease the leftist cultural Marxists, who are, by the way, the same ones who abuse the flagging system, the same one who same ones who know that they can give permission and then take it away and yep. YouTube will acquiesce to them. They are the ones who abuse these systems. That's why cultural censorship is always a tool of the left, and, and it just can't be from the they, right. They do it, and they do it to control the conversation. And I'm, conv right. I'm convinced that if, there, if a nuclear holocaust were to erupt today, and we had to rebuild the whole world, sans internet in Hollywood, the society would lean wildly conservative. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Without the, without the influence that they get, they keep you in the bubble. Absolutely. Censoring you constantly. I mean, you're looking at one of the most conservative generations, period, in a lot of yeah, issues, yep. despite all of this, despite the uphill battle. So here's the thing. Yes, businesses can do whatever they want. Okay, make no mistake. These businesses are able to cancel Roseanne. YouTube can say, we don't want any conservatives on our platform. But what these businesses are doing is trying to use their massive influence to blatantly usurp the law and get you so confused as to what's what that you'll just mm -hmm. stay silent. So, well, hold on a second. I went to a public, I went to a public gathering and I filmed some people who were advocating putting children on hormone blockers. Dr. Rex Butt, that was the guy's name, right? We talked about it on a Rogan show and then it got removed because the guy said, well, I don't really want to be on camera. Hold on a second. Well, but, but the law is single party consent law, right? We have a lawyer and retainer and that, YouTube says, doesn't matter. We don't respect the law. So what do they want you to do? They want you to get so confused. They want you to get so afraid that you remain silent. And you don't have to. Here's something important. Just like you don't have to be a cheerleader for Donald Trump, you can just as easily say, mm, I think Roseanne's tweet was dumb. Yep. I don't think it was a good tweet. You know, I can, I can understand the situation. Or if you, if, if you want, you can just say, I don't really care what she tweeted. You can have that opinion too. And you can go on your merry way of expressing other opinions. You don't need to be tarred and feathered because YouTube wants to put you in an algorithm with some neo-Nazi. Who cares? If you've learned nothing, if you've learned nothing else from this show, nothing else, do not left, let the leftist circus and the torch mob silence you. Do not let them scare you into silence and do not let them confuse you into a holding pattern. Here's something that we talk about that's really important. So 
yeah, you look at Roseanne right now and they're using it as a firing squad out there and they're trying to set an example going, hey, look, all of you better be quiet. But then you have other examples like Last Man Standing. They're saying, hey, look, all of you be quiet because you're violating copyright law on YouTube. And that does happen. And those people do have to be banned, unfortunately. But then you have people who do obey all the laws and they say, you know what? We're looking for a reason anyway. At some point, we're just going to ban all of it. They are trying to confuse you. Do not be silenced through fear and do not be put into a holding pattern through confusion. If you don't know what to do, move, do something because they're coming for you anyway. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, or if you want to continue to enjoy free content, support us at lottowithcredit.com slash mugclub, where you get the full nightly show. An hour, every day free, along with all of our friends' content. If not, you don't want to do any of those things. You're probably just here, you're watching me seething. You came here to hate watch. That being said, the internet was created for people like you.